this morning as I come to sit in Father's presence. And I just think of that which is weighing heavy upon my heart and the privilege that I have to come and to cast my cares upon Him. Scripture tells us that we must cast our cares upon Him because He cares for us. And, you know, we all know that sometimes life just brings us circumstances that are just impossible for us and we have no way out, we don't have a solution, or it's just been so long and it's become so heavy. And the fact that we can come into His presence with that, we don't have to leave it outside, we can come with it into His presence and cast our cares upon Him because He cares for us. And the old familiar song, what a friend we have in Jesus just came up in my heart. I grew up with that song. And the lyrics is, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And the second verse is, Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Saviour, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find solace there. And what a beautiful song. What an intimate song of being able to come to Him and give all our cares and sorrow to Him. And I thought of this friendship with Him as I sat here in His presence. I didn't say one word. I didn't speak to Him. I just sat in His presence as one would sit with your best friend and have no need to say anything because your friend knows you. You don't have to fill the empty spaces between the two of you. It is filled with your history together. It is filled with your love that you have for one another. It is filled with understanding and knowing one another. This, the empty space isn't there. There's oneness. And I know what it is to have a friend that you're so close with that you are able to finish one another's sentences. You know what the other person's thinking. You know what the other person likes. You know how circumstances affect that person. You feel deeply with that person as if you feel that person's sorrow. You also feel that person's joy. There is such union because of the history between you and because you know one another. Nothing can be compared to that kind of friendship. And in Hebrews we are told that we have a high priest that has compassion upon our infirmities. Yeah, he went through what we went through. And somehow, as glorious as that is, that does not encapsulate the understanding of friendship. It's rather in the priestly capacity of making a way and being a perfect high priest for us so that 
we can come into the throne, to the throne of grace, to receive mercy and grace in a time of trouble. And we can come with boldness to that throne of grace. But I, the word says that there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he is so faithful. And we've all had friends that come and go. And what about that friend that has promised till death do we part? And has parted long before death even came. He is not like our earthly friends, just like he's not like our earthly fathers or parents. He's altogether faithful and true. And what a friend he is. And how often do people feel that they come with the same old sin to him, the same problem, and his ears must be tired of hearing the same thing over. And we have this idea that we are a burden to him, that we bother him. And that he's only too happy once we've stopped talking so that he can go on with other things. But his promise to us is that he will never leave or forsake us. And so he's always with us. He doesn't go on with his day because he's got greater things or more important things to deal with. No, he's so intimate, he's so near, he's so close, he's so understanding, he's so loving. And he knows you. And he loves you far, far more than you could ever conceive. And it's to this friend that you come. One who does not judge you. One who is never tired of you. One who knows the deepest secrets of your heart. The vilest thing you've ever done. And covers that. Does not expose it. But as we've often heard, place it in the sea of forgetfulness. And he's your friend. He's not just your God. He's not just your father and all those high things and beautiful and glorious as it is. But he is also your friend. And a closer friend than him you will never find. A more faithful friend than him you will never find. A more loving and caring friend you will never find. And it's this friend that waits for you every morning to cast your care upon him. Because he will gladly carry every burden, every yoke. He will carry it for you. And so when you come in the mornings, come to this friend. Come to this friend that couldn't wait for you to wake up so that he can share his heart with you. Come to this friend that wants to hear, even though he knows, wants to hear how these things affect you. Wants to hear how you trust him. May you know that this friend does not still have to prove himself to you. He said that no friend or there is no greater love than he who lays his life down for his friends. And you are his friend. He wants to share his heart with you. Just as much as you want to share your heart with him. And so when you leave your room, wherever you are, in your quiet time, and you go on with your day, you leave lighter 
And when you've entered, you leave with a sense of solace and care and that everything's going to be okay. Father, thank you that you've given us your son, not only just to be our high priest, but to be intimate as a friend with us. Who would have thought that God would want to be a friend with us? Who would have thought that you desire such intimacy? Who would have thought that, that this is also your desire? It's not that you fulfilled only a desire of our heart, but in befriending us, you fulfill a desire of your heart. Thank you, Father, for being our friend through your Son. That you love us. That you care for us. And thank you, Yeshua, for loving us the way you do.